Vinny, what would you say to the 60 year old guy out there that probably could afford to lose 15, 20 pounds? He's heard about, you know, NSNG, carnivore, low carb. He's interested in it, but he's worried about, you know, cholesterol or red meat intake and he's on a statin. Um, I think that's actually probably one of your superpowers is that you can relate to people that are that age that are that have put on 20, 30 pounds. And if they were doing these right things, they could, you know, lose that weight and feel amazing as they age. So I'd love to just kind of get your thoughts on that. Cause I, you know, I think about my parents or family friends and I think about how good they can feel, but they're still kind of living in that like dogmatic past of flawed information. Yeah. Yeah. I get that question all the time. Um, and usually when I'm getting it is by either a client I'm talking to on the phone that has time to listen because they're paying or I'm at a dinner party and, you know, I'll have a guy telling me, Hey, you know, I, I used to look more like you, but now I'll put on the weight, you know, and the whole thing. And I'll, I'll say, look, you know, do this, that, and the other thing. And I'll say, yeah, but I'm already on a, I love this term, a light statin. If there is such a thing. Uh, my doctor told me my cholesterol was too high and I'll say, well, what was your total cholesterol? And they'll say something like, Oh, it was 198 or 205 or something. I'll go, what were your ACLs? And they, everyone knows these numbers off, off the top. Oh, my ACL, honey, what was that? 58, my ACLs, my LDLs were blah, blah, blah. And I'll go, eh, ratio sounds pretty good. But um, <clears throat> what about your uh, small dose particles? You know, what, how's that again? Your small, you know, did they check your APOA and your APOB? Do they know what your lipoproteins are doing? No, they didn't check that. And where were your triglycerides? Honey, do you know what a triglyceride is? No, I don't know. You know, so it's like, wait, they put you on a drug and they didn't check triglycerides, small dense particles. Did they do a CAC? That's like saying, that's like, can you imagine walking into a doctor's office and the doctor goes, okay, okay, Brett, I'm, I'm going to, um, I'm going to cast up your right arm. It's like, but it's not broken. Doesn't matter. I'm put a cast on it. You need a cast, but it's not broken, Doc. It could be. It, I know it sounds stupid when I say that, but I'm being I'm being honest here. Yeah. No, you know, a doctor wouldn't do a protocol that made no sense. Yet they don't mind handing statins out like candy, and statins have you know real consequences. Right. Anytime you take any drug, that's why people say, come on, then at 61, you're not taking TRT. No, because it might make this two or three other things do well, but there are consequences to every drug. There's no drug that does not have two or three problems. And statins are the same thing. So are you trading off this belief that you may not have a heart attack if you take a statin to get three or four other things to happen? Does that make sense to you? Because it, I'm, I'm perplexed by the whole thing. Totally. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. That the It seems like doctors are very willing to administer or prescribe statins as if there's no side effects. And I, I feel like, you know, there's probably several instances where, you know, people shouldn't be taking statins and they're just prescribed them just because like, my sister was in the hospital and they just started prescribing her statins. I'm like, what? This makes no sense. Uh, she's like perfectly healthy. And I recently just came across Dave Feldman's work and uh, Nick Norowitz. Did you see this? The Oreos reduced um, cholesterol more effect more effectively than statins. Did you see that study that just came out? I, I did. And um, of course, Dave has this great study that that is being reviewed right now. And um, he was on the show about two weeks ago, talking about all of it. And um, it's just crazy making and it'll be interesting to see how they bury this, because you know, they will, it's going to get buried somehow. It's just what they do. Crazy. Yeah, it makes you think about, <clears throat> like, what are we overcorrecting for just to prevent this one singular LDL score? You know, it's like, you're telling me that you don't feel good. You're 30 pounds overweight, but you're worried about the score when really your waist size is the biggest indicator of your metabolic health. So I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know if we've just lost this intuition of, do I feel good or do I feel bad? But it is always, you've been, you've seen this way more than I have, but just all these people that are 
they they have this fear or this aversion to eating more animal products when they objectively don't feel good and their numbers indicate that they're not healthy either, even if their LDL is low. Yeah, look, we've been sold this bill of goods that animal proteins are bad for us for so long that it's almost impossible. Look, you know, back when we had 40 sitcoms on on television at one time, that, that used to be the rate when they had three channels, right? Well, four channels, including Fox. So you had four channels that there was 40 sitcoms on television. And every joke back in the 70s and 80s was, hey, I'll, I'll take that sirloin steak with a side of cardiologist. You know, it, it was just a, such a cheap punchline that we, we, we somehow bastardized meat and eggs and everything else. I mean, doctors would tell people, don't oh, you have a cholesterol, problem. don't eat shrimp. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, you know, you get more omega threes from eating shrimp and crustacean than anything. Yeah, the doctor will say, whew, you know, we don't want you to have a heart problem. Stop eating something that's good for you. It makes no sense.